If you're starving hungry and someone's standing there with a pizza, you'll grab a slice or you'll destroy the whole thing. If you've just eaten a curry and someone offers you a pizza, well, you probably have no interest in eating it at all. Humans are interested in different things depending on different situations daily, and the same is true online. One day, we care about Justin Bieber's latest single. The next, we do not, or in my case, never. When this happens en masse, this interest in something is known as a trend, and working out how to capitalize on them could grow your YouTube channel a heck of a lot faster. Here's an example of the impact content that ranks and brings in steady views has versus content that trends online. The purple line is a video that sits there long term that's never really a hot topic, but people do look for it. It might bring in 100 views a day. I mean, that's not bad. The red image gets search traffic and does less, but it's pretty consistent. So you want a lot of videos like this because they're great for your YouTube channel, slowly building it over time. The blue and yellow line here are videos that targeted a trend, a topic covered that acted like the pizza the hungry person at the start of the video was just ah, tearing to pieces. This image shows the video that trending topic videos have on the entire channel. Not bad. As you can see though, the downside to making content about trending topics is they might not stay hot forever. Sometimes things might only trend for a day, for example. Ideally, you want to find topics that are on an upward trend to make videos about that will continue to get searches consistently forever. This is achieved with something that's called evergreen content. The benefit of getting in on a trend is there could be less competition to start with, meaning you can rank faster and generate views. So even if your content is not evergreen and is only trending for a week, let's say, a large spike in views means you'll get more suggested views on other topics with the new people who discovered your trending content. This will help to build subscribers and views on other videos too. Like this. So that's why trends are important. They can really put a boot up your channel's ass. So how do you find them? Well, Google Trends is a fantastic free tool for spotting them and working out what video topics to produce that your viewers will be interested in at that moment in time. So how does Google Trends work? Firstly, go to trends.google.com to check it out. Scroll down and straight away, you can see the big global trends as well as the year in search. If any of those trending searches work with your niche, then you should probably start there straight away. That's kind of a big deal. So now let's assume we're a YouTube channel and we make videos about live streaming. Let's start more general and use Google Trends to niche down our topic into a search term people might enjoy. So you start by typing how to go live. And you can see that this topic has been very popular recently on search. That's great to know, but we want to know how it performs on YouTube. So go to the web search drop down and select YouTube search. Now you see that this was very popular, then dipped, and now is on the upward trend again. Hooray! This looks like a good option. So that brings me on to explaining what this graph means. This graph does not show the amount of search traffic, but the amount of interest. So 100 is the peak in popularity for the term. 50 means it's running at half its popularity, and zero means there's not enough data to report on it, so it's probably not that popular. What is at 100 today in four years' time could actually move down to 50 as more interest comes in and a new peak is formed. That could happen over a week, it could happen over 10 years. Scrolling down, we can see a breakout search query on our original search is how to go live on TikTok 2020. That's very good news. You can see that there are percentage increase listed on other topics, but producing a video on TikTok Live seems like a winner, so we can click on it to learn more. Let's set the location. It was worldwide to start because this fake YouTube channel wants views from the whole planet. If we set the date range to start from 2008, the present day, you can see just how much this is trending. It's not just a short trend too, like a new article people might forget about a week later, so that's our first good sign. Sure, interest might dip, but it might dip with tons of search volume still left. So now let's scroll down the page and you can see the countries with the highest search interest. Let's say for now I'm only interested in views from America because my YouTube is actually a platform for my live streaming business based in the USA. I'll change that to United States in the location setting. Now we can see the states with the most interest. Scroll down to the next section related queries and this is where we can see what hot topics are around this. On this example, how to go live on TikTok 2020, it's a breakout topic. Sometimes this says breakout, sometimes it gives a percentage increase in interest. On the left, you'll see other topics that are more general. 
If you click these, the same thing will happen again. It will show interest and search queries. But now I think how to go live on TikTok 2020 seems like an amazing term. So let's head over to YouTube and have a look at what's on there. We can see that others have made videos on it, but TubeBuddy is saying it's not the worst title to try and rank for. Because I'm using TubeBuddy, I can see other suggestions and actually making a video about how to go live on TikTok with an iPhone seems like a big opportunity, so I'll jot that one down. By the way, if you don't have TubeBuddy, there's a link in the description to download it. I highly recommend it. So that's a title that's a hot topic and one you can adapt to rank and take advantage of. So this is an amazing tool, right? But there's an issue. What if live streaming on Instagram is of more interest to people right now? Because that's what we're after. So I'll type that in. Again, I've missed the trend, no doubt, because of the lockdown from the coronavirus, but we'll see. When you scroll down, you're met with how to go live on TikTok as a related query. Hmm, interesting. So now the fun part, I'm going to write how to go live in TikTok in the comparison box. Even though I've missed the peak interest on both, this makes it crystal clear which one has more interest right now and I should make more content about it. If you'd have done this in February 2020, there's a chance your channel could have been taken to new levels by one or two videos, which is why keeping an eye on trends in your niche should become a habit that you form. There's an issue though, due to the way people search, you could miss out on a trend by getting one word wrong. Let's play a little game. I want you to guess which option has more search interest, okay? How to make a cake versus how to bake a cake? Put your answer in the comment below. So, how to make a cake smashes it, which might surprise you. What about how to brush your teeth versus how to wash your teeth? How to brush your teeth one, thank God. I never understand people who say wash your teeth. Google Trends is an amazing tool for YouTubers, but even better is learning to listen out for trends because sometimes they aren't as obvious. Pair listening with Google Trends and TubeBuddy and you could have a weapon of mass distribution. Some niches have trends on a regular basis or if you're unlucky like me, they're not really that common. Just make sure your trending content doesn't leave your niche. It will muddy the waters of your channel. If you found that helpful, then hit the subscribe button because it won't hit itself. And then check out this review on TubeBuddy's paid option and if you should make the upgrade to work with Google Trends as a powerful friend, or this video here will help you pick video topics using other tools too. Thanks for watching. That's a real cheesy sign off.